Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Carmoon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to show you the differences between the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air when it comes to video editing in Final Cut Pro. Now I will be pushing out other videos on other tests like 3D rendering, Chrome, Zoom and other comparisons, let's say comparing them to the Intel ones that I've got behind me and general performance videos as well. So hit that like button if you want to keep watching these types of videos and watch right to the end because my recommendations are really interesting so you don't want to miss that. Trust me I've been working super hard on these Macs so without wasting any more time let's get into this. Okay, so we've got Final Cut Pro open on the base MacBook Air. And as you can see, we are in a 4K timeline and we've got a couple of different types of footage. So we've got H.264, 10-bit and ProRes. And I've just repeated it all the way through just to kind of simulate the typical workflow kind of thing uh, in a typical content creator's life, really. And as you'll see, I've got background rendering turned off. We've also set it to better quality as well. Now here I've just applied a, a LUT onto this and let's just check the playback of H.264. So it's got two LUTs on there so it's you know pr pretty tough and no drop frames in H.264. We've also got 10-bit HEVC footage and let's just click around because this is normally a little bit tough for most computers to handle but the MacBook Air is handling it absolutely fine. And finally, we've got ProRes, no drop frames, just clicking through and it just starts up as you can see, scrubbing on each of the footage, no problem whatsoever. Let's do a whole timeline. Looks very, very smooth. Let's see a transition, any drop frames, a couple, but nothing that I would say is major I would say no so all looks good to me now just to let you guys know I have done a Cinebench run before this as well as an export test just to really heat up this CPU to kind of show worst case scenario when the CPU is really hot what this is like and yeah it's playing back absolutely fine as you guys can see so even if you've been doing very cpu intensive uh, tasks or uh, gpu intensive tasks and then you know while you're editing so it's kind of just to simulate a typical workflow because normally as a content creator you're editing for hours and hours on end and this kind of just to kind of speed up that process is just to hit the cpu really hard and as you can see it is just scrubbing through no, no issues at all, as you can see. And that is with two LUTs applied onto that. Now let's do a stabilization test. So let's go into there, let's drag that down. So this is a 4K uh, H.264 file. Uh, it's about 21 seconds, and we're gonna see how long it takes to stabilize this footage. Three, two, one. And there you go. So it stabilized that 21 second clip in about 10 seconds, which is extremely fast, much better than the previous MacBook Air, I have to be honest. So we're now exporting a close to 20 minute project just to see how it handles a longer workload, which is typical, you know, sometimes exports can be, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes long, especially this type of size. It, it can be quite tough for a computer, especially without a fan. And what is surprising to me is the fact that it's doing this without a fan. So these, this is a stark difference to the Intel uh, MacBooks because even my MacBook Pro with the dual fans and the 10, uh, 10th generation Intel processor, it is, it sounds like a tornado when that thing is exporting for, you know, 60 to 80% of that render. And this thing is completely silent. Okay, so just about to finish the export and this happened. So it said your system has run out of application memory. So it looks like the eight gigabytes of RAM just 
isn't quite enough sometimes to handle this. And this is not the first time I've seen this. Uh, I've done, I've tried to push the system and when these things happen, it, it, it ends up running out of system memory and causes a failure. Okay, and that is complete. So that took 11 minutes and 55 seconds. So I ran the test again. What I did to fix the issue was just a quick Final Cut Pro, start it up again and run the benchmark straight, uh, or run the export straight away and it ran absolutely fine. But as I said before, if you're gonna be doing a lot of these types of videos, then I would recommend you upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of, of RAM because as you saw, it just ran out of application memory, which means that it just didn't have enough RAM to, to complete it because, and especially when you then start factoring in things like Chrome and everything like that, you're gonna run out of system memory very, very quickly. And those types of applications are very RAM intensive. If you can upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of RAM if you're going to be doing things like this. But yeah, I did the same test when it came to, to this and again, I, I ran into the same issue. So I know it's a RAM issue, not, not a hard drive space issue. If you do do something like this and you only have eight gigabytes, then just quit the application and start it up again and you should be fine. There's there's no, no issues with that. Okay, so I've let the MacBook Air cool down and I just thought I'd show you the difference in let's say this specific test as this is the one that kind of showed it the best, the performance difference so if we just go ahead and stabilize and done. So six seconds or six and a half seconds to stabilize that clip compared to 10 seconds, which I shown you earlier. So that's the difference in performance when the laptop is cold compared to the laptop is hot. And that is with the same settings as we've had before. It's the same. I've just uh, taken this clip out and then re-added it, obviously to get rid of that stabilization before. Rerun the test. And as you saw, we've shaved off, you know, close to four seconds off of that time, which does add up over, over a long edit. So there's the difference in the real world of when the laptop is hot compared to when the laptop is cold. So definitely a little bit of throttling uh, in the performance. So now we have the MacBook Pro. So let's do the stabilization test and let's see how this compares to the MacBook Air, because we all know that that's what we want to see. We wanna see these two head to head, because as content creators, we wanna save a bit of money, but we don't wanna lose out on too much performance. So let's see how this performs under the stabilization. So it's the same test, obviously has the eight core GPU. Now this is the base model, but this has the eight core GPU. So let's see the difference in performance. And done. So basically the same as the MacBook Air when it's cold. So yeah, and this, by the way, I've done loads of tests. Uh, this doesn't change on this MacBook Pro, whether it's hot or cold. So this is basically the same throughout whether I've done the extensive load or not. So I know that with this MacBook Pro, if you're doing extensive work for long periods of time, so things like, again, Final Cut Pro editing and all of that, you're really not gonna see any difference in performance because it's got that fan and one fan at that. So yeah, that's just a quick little difference just to kind of show you that you can get the work done on the MacBook Air, but the MacBook Pro does do it better when it's hot. So now we're gonna do a timeline performance. So as we've seen in the MacBook Air, it, we're not gonna struggle with any of this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just gonna run absolutely fine. We're not gonna see any issues when it comes to playback or scrubbing or anything like that. This is H.265, 10-bit, no problems whatsoever. ProRes, even better you know, nice and smooth, no issues at all. And yeah, we, ju we, just, we just don't see any difference. And it's because it's got the same M1 chip. So now let's go and export this footage and let's see if it's any quicker at exporting this 20 minute clip, because that's really where we might see the difference is when it's under load and it's hot and everything like that. Can the MacBook Pro beat? the M1 MacBook Air, or will it be the same? I know the answer, but let's find out together. And there you go, done. So that was obviously a lot quicker this time, so 11 minutes and 41 seconds, but the MacBook Air, I don't know if you can see that, 11 minutes and 50 seconds. So literally a 10 second difference between the two. So 
Yeah, it was very odd for me because when I was running these tests, uh, basically the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro lined up very, very similar. So they're, even with that extra core GPU, I mean, we see obviously a few seconds quicker here and there, sometimes even a little bit slower. As you can see that I would say they're pretty much evenly matched. I wouldn't say that one was 300 pound more than the other one, that's for sure. I wouldn't say there was that much of a difference because we're talking about 30% increase in price and we're not really seeing you know a 30 well we're not seeing at all a 30 percent increase in in performance obviously it doesn't work that way but you know what i mean so for for the extra 300 uh, I, I don't know but this was just a super interesting test for me to 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 show you guys because as you saw it didn't really make a difference with that extra gpu and oh that extra core of gpu and the fan and just to show you i thought i'd run it again just to show you where you know, just over five minutes, five and a half minutes in, and again, system has run out of application memory. So the export has failed. So I wanted to kind of show that on camera that when you are pushing this system on both systems, uh, you can see that basically eight gigabytes is just not enough. So whether you go for the Pro or the Air, I think that if you're gonna be doing Final Cut Pro, you are definitely going to need 16 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see, both MacBooks handled 4K video editing of almost any kind without any issues, no matter what I did to it. However, one thing that I wasn't able to test was my tracking plugins, as my tracking plugins from uh, Pixel Film Studios and uh, Motion VFX still haven't been updated for the M1 chip. So I will update you on this when I do my full review of these MacBooks. Also, I did experience a crash in Final Cut Pro, but it didn't happen again. And if you've ever video edited, you know how normal this can be. Now, all the tests that I did were with 4K. I didn't test uh, 6K or 8K for now, as this isn't really something that you guys really wanted me to test uh, on these MacBooks. I think most of you edit uh, 1080p and even 4K footage, especially nowadays with cameras doing 4K 10-bit. I think that was the main concern and as you saw, it handled it absolutely fine, both uh, in the Final Cut Pro uh, timeline as well as exporting. No issues with either models. Can I just say, both models were extremely quiet. Obviously the Air, but especially the Pro, because even with back-to-back uh, tests, it stayed extremely silent. And my Intel Max would sound like hair dryers when I was pushing them in exactly the same way. And also, both tests uh, on each of the MacBooks were done on a single charge. So for anyone that says that they haven't done much with the design, I don't really care because the battery improvements as well as the internals are a big upgrade for me. The fact that I could do a whole day worth of testing and it barely drained the battery, I mean, is, is a good MacBook in my eyes. So what are my recommendations for video editors? Well, based on my initial tests, I think that if you're a normal content creator like myself, I think that the MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM would be my choice over the base MacBook Pro if you're looking for a good video editing machine for under 1300 pounds. I'm actually considering this for myself and selling my Intel MacBook Pro, which actually shows how much I believe in this MacBook Air. I actually wouldn't upgrade the Pro to the 16 gigabytes and then the SSD to 512 gigabytes for 1699, as I think that Apple will be updating the high-end 13 inch to the new 14 inch with a faster M1 chip for around 1799, and that'll be a much better buy for the money. This recommendation is only based on video editing and not if you are someone who games or 3D renders or anything like that. So wait for those reviews to come out from me and everyone else, obviously. But if you're a casual user, honestly, the base air is more than enough and eight gigabytes will be fine. But if you edit a video, then I think the best bang for buck is gonna be that 16 gigabyte uh, MacBook Air and all of that for 1200 quid, 
I think is a beast. I would also recommend getting an external SSD over buying the ones from Apple, as you don't need the super fast speeds that Apple are claiming with these new SSDs for video editing and even for everyday tasks. And if you plan on switching computers or Macs like I do on an often basis, then it's much easier just to work off of a good drive. It's actually what I've been doing for a little while, and I'll leave some links down in the description below on my recommended uh, SSDs and even Thunderbolt drives for the Macs that I've actually tried because there are a few that I really, really love and have performed extremely well for me. However, as I mentioned before, there are some plugins that you might use, mainly tracking plugins that will not work with this new M1 and may not be updated for a little while depending on the developer. So please wait until you've checked with the developer if they will support M1 or not and see how long it will take for them to do so if they haven't, as they won't be translated through Rosetta 2, not from what I can see and have tested anyway. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on what you thought of this video, and also, like I said, check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it, as I spent a lot of time working on this video. And if you want to watch more content from me, then please, you you know what to do, click on one of these two videos. I made them myself, you know I have. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next M1 MacBook video. Take care, bye.